to Pandemic Cooking. Today we're going to be making pot stickers. This is actually one of my favorite like Chinese cooking recipes because a little nostalgia. Um, growing up, we would always go to a restaurant called North China. It was on White Ave. Now it's Langano Skies. And they had the best pot stickers that I've ever had. And I've been trying since then to recreate them. So I'm going to be making my pot sticker dough from scratch today. Um, and then I'm going to be doing a filling. Did, does that surprise you? Yeah, I thought we had wrappers. Yeah, you know what we do? Hang on, I have to get the dough hook. Okay. Like, I always am like, yes, I'm prepared. And then something something will happen that I'm like, no, I forgot that. No, we're gonna make it from scratch. I've done it before. I really like doing it. It's super, super simple. This is almost like, it's also a very similar dough to green onion cakes. If you're gonna make your, if you were going to make homemade green onion cakes. So in the mixer, I've got fitted with the hook attachment. I have two cups of flour. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of salt and I'm gonna add half a cup of water and I'm gonna get that going while I make my filling. Okay, I'll just start it on low and then check back in a second. Okay, so if you look at the ingredients here, I have some green onion, I have a bok choy in a perfect world, I would have Napa cabbage, but I couldn't find any at the grocery store I was at. Um, and then I have ground chicken. So there seems to be a pork panic happening right now, and we couldn't find ground pork, so we're gonna use ground chicken. I actually do this sometimes in my class because um, not everyone can have pork. So ground chicken is fine. It's not as um, it's not as fatty. So I'm gonna add a little bit more uh, sesame oil to it. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to really finely chop my bok choy. Um, what I find with the bok choy or your Napa cabbage is it adds a really nice crunch to the pot stickers, to the filling. Um, this is also what I would use to make, if I were making wontons, this is the same thing I would do as well. I'd add a nice green. I probably wouldn't add the deep colored bok choy um, just because the leaves are gonna wilt too much. So you really want a lot of this like um, white part is gonna add a lot of the nice crunch. So just keep bringing your bok choy together or your Napa cabbage together and really finely chopping it. Sometimes what you could do is you could throw everything into a food processor and just including the meat and just blend it all up. But I wanted to show you without a food processor. See, I got this big one in here, make sure that's, you don't wanna to get to your pot sticker and have like a big giant leaf of, of your greens. Okay, I'm good with that. I'm not gonna add it all at this point. I'm gonna add about half of it and then see how we go. Okay, so for my green onions, I really like green onions. I feel like they add so much flavor. So I'm gonna add quite a lot of them. So I've taken the tops off my green onions and I'm gonna do a really fine chop all the way to the white. You get more flavor in the white of the green onion. Look at this one. Look at my skills. I am gonna run the knife through them another time because again, I want everything to be quite small. Pick up that piece. Okay. I'm gonna take my knife through my green onions. Make sure I get that piece chopped up. I'm gonna take out this one that I can't seem to get. And then I'm gonna add all of them to the to the chicken mixture or the pork mixture. I would probably only do chicken or pork. I would not do a ground beef. Um, I probably wouldn't do a ground veg. I think it'd be really hard to keep together. And I wouldn't do a ground turkey. To me, those just aren't like, if we're talking about like Asian flavors, to me, those aren't um, Asian flavors. Okay, my dough is not looking great. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water, pump up the, the mixer a little bit. Do my trick. My bowl trick that sometimes goes so. Like it is right now. There we go. 
Come on. If you have a bigger amount, then it's going to catch a little bit easier. Okay, so I needed to add quite a bit of extra water to this. I'm going to slow it down now so it's not so loud, not so whiny, Alaska, as I finish the filling. There we go. Okay, perfect. So now I've got my chicken, I've got my um, cabbage, I've got my green onions. Now I'm going to add sesame oil. So sesame oil is very, um, I find the flavor very unique to a lot of Asian cooking. I'm going to add about a tablespoon here. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of soy sauce. And now I'm going to add some salt. Now, in my experience, the biggest mistake people make is that they don't salt it enough. Because remember that a lot of these things, like the flavor is going to be really enhanced by the salt. I'm going to add about half a teaspoon of black pepper. And now I'm going to add the ginger. So this is a skill that I wanted to show you. So I've got a piece of fresh ginger. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a spoon and scrape off the skin. I've cut the edge off so I've got a nice piece to work with here. And then I have my microplaner. So if you don't have a microplaner, you can use the box side of your grater, the, the, like the skinny side. Okay. Now, in my opinion, you can never have too much ginger, so I'm gonna take my microplaner. I'm just gonna give it a quick grate. Micro means small, so we're getting a nice, like almost like a paste. So I'm gonna just add that to my filling. Okay? It smells so good. Right? It smells so good, so so fresh. And what I have learned about um, uh, is <laughs> pan up, pan up, pan up. So for me, Asian cooking, whether it's Thai, Vietnamese, Chinese, Japanese, Asian cooking has been the hardest for me to like wrap my head around because I feel like um, the recipes that I want to make, I don't have a lot of the ingredients, a lot of specialty ingredients can be found at TNT um, or any other like specialty Asian shops. So I found, I found it like difficult for me to wrap my head around all of the processes in it. Um, and also I'm aware that a lot of the Chinese cooking or today we're doing a Chinese recipe, Chinese cooking or like Chinese restaurants that we have are very, very westernized. So I know that's not super authentic. Um, one of the things that usually goes into pot stickers, if you wanted to add like some ground up shrimp and you wanted to add that into your meat mixture, you could. So that is traditionally in like a pot sticker or a wonton, um, but I'm, I'm not a shrimp fan, so. And why aren't you a shrimp fan? Tell us what you think of them. Because they're the bottom feeders of the ocean and I don't want to eat another food's garbage. Is that bad? Do you share the sentiment with me or do you? No, I love shrimp. You love shrimp? Yeah. Well, I can't do it and I can like pick it out. I'll be like, mm, I don't love these wontons. And like, there's a piece, there's a tiny little piece of shrimp. Okay, the ground pork wouldn't be quite as sticky, but that's okay. When, if we're making like a meatball, you might want to add something to like dry it up a little bit. Like, um, I don't want to say a breadcrumb. You can use like a panko breadcrumb in these, but I'm, this is just, this is what it is today. So that's our mixture. Now, for me, the hardest part is making sure that this tastes good. I'm not going to go ahead and like, unlike Mr. Dawson, who would go ahead and eat this, I am not going to. I have other illnesses to worry about. I right don't now. think Mr. Dawson would eat raw chicken. Oh, you're right. He'd he eat raw eat pork. pork and raw beef. I'm going to smell it. If I don't, if, de if it doesn't smell fragrant enough to me, I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna use my gut. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt. You're right, you wouldn't eat raw chicken. Yeah. I wouldn't put it past them though. <laughs> Cats. Okay, I just wanna make sure that it smells okay. That's all I have to work on right now. Okay, so I'm gonna wash my hands. And then I'm gonna show you how to roll the pot stickers. Best to my knowledge. All right, my little dough is looking pretty cute now. I'm feeling much better about that. I was panicking them for a second. Okay, I'm gonna get my station all set back, all set up, and I'll see you.
see you in a minute. Okay, so we're back. I've got my station cleaned up and now I'm getting ready to fill and cook them. So I have a chef knife, a rolling pin, and I forgot my, I do have dumpling rollers at home, but I forgot them. Um, my filling, my pan, so, and a lid. So these are all really important because we are going to pan fry and steam them at the same time. This is a technique that I learned when I was um, at Nate and I actually love it for cooking pot stickers. So there's a couple different things that you could do for, uh, I wouldn't necessarily use this dough for a wonton soup. I think it would be much too thick, but for a pot sticker, it's perfect. If you wanted to make like, like, like a Chinese meatball, like a sweet and sour meatball, you could definitely use this base roll the meatballs, make like a sweet and sour sauce. But what I want you to take from these recipes is that maybe you're not making pot stickers, but you've got some different elements that you could apply to different things. Like if you wanted to make a green onion cake out of this, you could. Um, a sweet and sour meatball, uh, wontons, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so I've got my dough here. I'm gonna cut off a bit of it. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use the Grandma Stelma's Chuck Technique and I'm just gonna cover the rest of the dough with my bowl. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this out. And this is when I do a pierogi video. This is how I will make the pierogies as well. I'm going to roll it out and I'm just going to cut off little balls of dough. All right, so I'm going to go one at a time. Now, because I'm dealing with raw chicken here, I don't want to be going back and forth to my rolling pin and stuff all the time. Oh, it's a heart. Cute, Ms. N, that one's for you. Oh, thanks. Okay, I feel like they're much too small. Next time I'll make them bigger. So I give them a cute little roll. There, that's a better size. So I'm gonna roll probably about six of them. And then while I'm filling them, I'm gonna get my oil heating up so we can cook these ones. Okay, so this technique is really cool. I hope that you like learning from it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my pan at about a medium heat and I'm going to give a generous glug of oil. I'm just using canola oil. I would not use a sesame oil. I would not use, a, you can use the peanut oil. Um, <clears throat> I would not use an olive oil, but I'm gonna just get it coating the bottom of the pan here. I've got it heating up because I want them to sizzle. Okay, so now, I'm worried about this one. That one's not gonna. Oh, the heart. I know the heart, it's gotta go, it's too small. Like my like my own personal heart. Oh, too small, man. Don't I, say that. I know, right? Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a dollop of the filling and put them on each piece of dough. Is this, is this the traditional or correct way to make pot stickers? I don't know, okay? I don't know. But this is what I've been able to come up with over the years. Based on my Ukrainian heritage, this is, this is where I've got this. So it all comes back to being Ukrainian. This all comes back to being Ukrainian. That one's a little bit full. Okay, so what I had to learn is I had to learn that pinching a pierogi and folding a pot sticker are different. I'm just gonna give my hand a rinse because I don't want chickeny hands or porky hands. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to fold the pot sticker and you are going to kind of accordion the dough, okay? That looks great, that looks, looks hundo P. Pinch it. If this was later in the afternoon, we would if this was later in the bad. afternoon, this would be a complete disaster. That's it. So it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm gonna cook them on this flat side here. Um, let's, see, let's see if I can do a better one. When I watched the chef do this and I did it, I was like, oh, mine looks like a pierogi. But it's okay, it doesn't need to be perfect. And you know what? It's not like pinching a pierogi where it has to be like you want it to be closed, but they're not really gonna like open up while you're frying them. Yeah, it's not like we're boiling them. Right, yeah, is that it? Is that why the yeah. boiling the boiling is so risky? Yeah. I like to have clean hands, but that little piece of chicken's coming out. That's fine. Okay, so then you can kind of do like a cute little like wiggly squiggly design here and then it looks more authentic. I try so hard and my poor little students are like, it's not how my mom does it. I'm like, I know. 
I'm trying. I'm trying. Dude, Mr. Zhang gave me a compliment yesterday. Do you want to hear it? It was really nice. What was it? Okay, so he comes in and, you know, we're talking about, like, teaching in the pandemic and, you know, trying to, trying, like, trying to find the positives and, like, be like, okay, like, you know, for a lot of teachers, we've had to, like, learn some technology that maybe we haven't wanted to learn over the, over how long. And we're kind of forced to come out of our comfort zone a little bit. And he said... What was cool about us doing this is like, usually when you come into my class, there's 30 students doing everything and I'm answering how much chicken bouillon goes into the water to get cup, right? Like that's the question that I've been asked most in my career, even though I have prepped every recipe with that information. And he said, it's nice to be able to see like our skill. Like we, um, like I can't just like manage a classroom and answer your questions. Like I know, I personally know how to do these things too. And I was like, that's nice. Cause you're right. You don't normally see that. I was like, Michael, you know, who's really amazing in the pandemic? Michael Zhang. Michael Zhang, shout out to you. And you know what? You came in and you judged my pot stickers one time and you gave me a compliment. And then you told me they didn't have enough salt. And that's why I really salted them. Okay. So, and also my, my dough doesn't call for salt in the recipe, but mm -mm, I can't not. Okay, I'm just letting this heat up a little bit more. I really want that sizzle to happen. I'm gonna cut these a little bit bigger. Oh, this one opened up, so I'm gonna give it a quick squeeze. I can see, I can see the heat. And you know what I want? I want to get as many of them as possible in that pan because the first fry is always the best. Did your parents make the dough, Ms. Anne? When they nope, made... they didn't make the dough. No? Nope, they used wrappers. I, you can, right? Like if you've got wonton wrappers or you're gonna, I don't know, I just like the homemade dough. And when I think about the North China ones, like from that restaurant, they were, it was homemade dough. Oh, when that restaurant closed down, it was like one of the highlights of my childhood. Did you have a restaurant like that? Um, yep, it's, oh my God, where is it? Okay, it is, where is that restaurant? I think it's on the west side. Okay. I'm not sure, or does it, north does side. Does it still exist? Yes, uh, I think it's like Szechuan Castle. It looks like a castle. Oh my God, should we go? Um, well, it's pet. Oh, that's right. Should we order out? Should we take out? No, because like, I remember being a kid and like going to that restaurant because they had a buffet and like eating deep fried wontons, like fried rice, because that's all I liked when I was a kid. And they had these like, little dessert cakes that were probably just bought at like you know um, like a wholesale street? club or something oh, yeah. but like i just remember them being so good when i was a kid they had like a little flower on them ah, love it's like it's i really really like how food is nostalgic and like when we went to the fancier chinese restaurant like my mom my grandma always like pearl river pearl river which still exists but i remember north china like when we were going to north china i was like yes and we'd always get like the wonton soup, we'd get pot stickers, we'd get green onion cakes. Okay, I'm gonna put these in. Perfect. Cause I want that bottom to cook. And I'm gonna keep these ones on this side cause I'm gonna fold these ones and add them in too. So I know that these ones will be done first. So yeah, we always get the pot stickers, like a Szechuan beef, like there were like chicken chow mein, like there were some dishes that we always got. And I was so sad when it closed down. Not that Langano Skies is not amazing because it's also a really good restaurant. Um, but man, oh man, like all of these amazing memories from our childhood. And then the pizza we always went to was called Flamingo and it's on 23rd Ave. It's still there, but it's now it's called Piper's Pizza, but mm. not the same. Not the same. I remember there was this like burger place in Spruce Grove that we used to get from and they'd do these like little mini sliders. And I remember- Before I, they were cool. Before they, sliders were cool. Yeah. And that's like what I would get when I was a kid. And- Ugh. That's like my mac and cheese video. When I talked about going to Kelowna and going to the white spot and getting the mac and cheese. Now that I realize it's probably just like noodles and Velveeta, but like it has been my life's goal to find. You have a white spot like in Kelowna that memory. I have a white spot in Kelowna memory. Shut up, you do? Yeah, but I don't no. think it was in Kelowna. I think it was just somewhere in BC. But anyways, I remember going to white spot like when we were driving through BC. Yes! And like I got this veggie burger. Oh my goodness, I've this never so had good. a veggie burger. Like I don't think, I, like where, I've never had a veggie burger I love that much. 
uh, like this just, I don't know, like I, what I, I think that's what I love so much about like, and this has taken me some time in my career and like my, and getting older that like, oh my gosh, so many of these memories are sparked by food and like the restaurants mm -hmm. and the experiences that we have together with exactly. like our family. I don't know. And, and I, you know what? Anytime I see a confetti cake, I will think of us oh my making God. that cake video. I can't wait for you to post that video. It was, I can't even. And I was trying to tell Victor about it. Yeah, I was like, trying to tell Andrew about it. And, and I'm laughing so hard and like nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing makes like, sense. And he's like, so what was funny? I'm like, I don't know. It was Everything. Just so it was funny. just so funny. It was just so funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh yes. Look at that gorgeous color. Okay. I want them darker than that. A little bit. Good though. Yeah. You know why my hand was wet? That's why. It's about killed us. Yeah. The water trick is not always the safest trick. No, but then I'm gonna I'm gonna add water to this. Oh good. It's yeah, it's gonna be <laughs> Oh good. Oh good. Um it's gonna hey, be how long until you think we need to add water to this? I'm gonna wait till the okay, so this is how it works. I'm gonna wait till the color is the color I want on the bottom. I'm gonna add my half cup of water and then I'm gonna steam them. I'm gonna pop the lid on. Mm -hmm. Again, I was gonna bring a, like a glass lid from home so you could see, forgot. So we've got a metal lid here, but then what's gonna happen is we're gonna create like a vacuum and the steam is going to cook the rest of the chicken. All right. So when I do this in school, everyone's like, the chicken is raw. I'm like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like just trust, just trust. It's hard though. Hard, it's hard, trusting. It's hard trusting this Ukrainian girl teaching this pot sticker recipe. I know, I get that, but super important. You know what? I was worried about the second batch, but I can just start a new pan, right? Ah, uh, yeah. See? Cool. That's brown. Okay. Ready? All right. Let's put the water in. Okay. If we don't see you again, we've burned down the skull. Okay. Bye. Lid goes on. See you in five. Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, so they've been on the heat for about five minutes, uh, five, six minutes, and there's a little popping, there's a little steaming going on, that's all totally fine. So what you're gonna do at this point is you're going to remove the lid, put it to the side, and before we take these off, I'm just gonna make sure that they're cooked through. So I'm gonna take one, I'm gonna take it out, I'm gonna give it a quick cut, make sure that it's all cooked in the middle. I'm happy with that. And what you can see, you can see that the color, let's see, sorry, you can see that the color is still nice and golden, okay? So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna increase the heat a little bit, try and cook off some of this liquid before I take them out. But that's it, this is all you need to do. This took us maybe 20 minutes to make homemade pot stickers including the dough. Um, but I hope that you learned something really interesting or different with this style, style of cooking. It's a little splattery, okay? I'm okay with it, it doesn't bother me. What? <laughs> it bothers me now, I'm gonna stand back. I'm gonna stand back. But when we are mixing the oil with the water, this is what we get. But this is how you steam, get that crispy on the bottom, okay? Bon chance, everybody. I hope you enjoyed our positive video. Oh! Or something like that and good luck we'll see you on the flip side bye